This is The Roundtable, a talk show brought to you by the Glastonbury Goddess Conference. In this circle, the priestesses of the ceremonial circle, the weavers of our annual gathering, talk about pivotal topics about our community, spirituality and goddess. Join us this year for the 29th Glastonbury Goddess Conference, a joyful gathering of goddess-loving people, a six days in-person event in Glastonbury, Avalon, running from Tuesday 30th July to Sunday 4th August 2024, with fringe events starting from Sunday 28th July. This year the theme is the Goddess of Healing, it's our maiden year, the first year of a new five-year cycle. International presenters, transformative workshops and experiences, deep ceremonies on the sacred land of Avalon, community, art, fun and love for goddess. Let your healing journey begin this year. Join us for the Glastonbury Goddess Conference, Goddess of Healing. There are so many options to participate, full conference tickets, weekend tickets, day tickets. Find what suits you best and get your ticket now at goddessconference.com. Good evening to all our beloved Goddess community following us on Facebook Live right now, on the podcast every week and on YouTube. Thank you so much for following us. Today we are here with our episode number seven. It's seven. It's a lot of them, seven, right? So yes. love to welcome to this wonderful panel today, Marion Brigantia. Hello. Amanda Baker. Hi. Stephanie Alison Schudel. Hello. Katinka Sutens. Hello, darlings. Our topic today is healing or placebo. We have some questions to start from, which are how wide is the scope of holistic healing? Can the placebo effect be considered in it? Even so, could it still heal us regardless? And how do we as healers make our work relevant and grounded and at the same time work with faith and surrender trust for the best health outcome of our clients? So to start this topic today, Marion, the word to you. Yes, interesting, interesting um, topic. Of course, we're very much into the center of uh, what we are working with this year with healing and of course in the in the in the ceremonial group that was the first thing we were talking about but what is healing you know what does it entail what what is what uh, is it the same thing as curing how does it work with body mind spirit so it's it's of course when we we start this these journeys we we go really to the to the basics, you know. Like, what does it mean? How do you do you work with healing? How do uh, you know how you have you received healing? So all these experiences that we have and we share in the ceremonial circle are kind of the starting point of our whole weaving of ceremony. And it's it's interesting because the ceremonies in themselves are. Um, we we pretend, we uh, intend to be uh, the intention is to bring healing in some in some form. So I think um, for me the healing is not the same as curing. Um, it can be, but it's not necessarily the same thing. And healing is more like a holistic. It says the words itself says itself. You know, it's like healing, holistic, whole. Uh, all those things have the same um, um, center in in the in the uh, it's called etymology in the words in the words. So uh, it is really a, a wholeness. And so, as I said, body, mind, and spirit. I think uh, when you talk about placebo, uh, it's really that that combination of body and mind, and how does uh, the body. Um, of how does the mind heal the body? So we sometimes say mind over matter, you know. So how is the psychological um, healing coming through? So I, I personally think placebo has a very bad rap. Um, I think it's uh, actually, um, if you look at holistic work, um, then 
placebo is 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 a normal thing. It's not it's not it's not it's part of the wholeness. It's not uh, oh you know you you it's a fake thing. It's because that's how it's often seen. It's seen as something that is fake, or uh, you know you know, somebody is fooled. Uh, it's a belief something, but that's not really. I, that's not how I see it. I don't know if anybody else sees it like differently. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting point, Marion. I think it's a very um, <clears throat> it's a very true word, and it's a real thing within particular medical research, which is, of course, a form of healing. Um, medical medicine, the the kind of um, the science behind that works with the placebo thing effect as a test, really, to see if they're statistically are consequences or results from certain say medication or proce or procedures however i think if we look at the bigger picture that you are referring to really and we're looking from our our pagan tradition uh, then we're really seeing that faith healing or the power of prayer or the magic of intention um, is all part of the effect that that has increases um exponentially uh in relation to the openness or the willingness to accept or to believe or to receive or to activate that healing i mean i think reiki, reiki is an example of this yeah energetic healing uh, modality uh, that i'm actually not so familiar with but my sister is strange in this and is a, a reiki practitioner so it's like you know you have to believe it's lovely when people send you reiki or send you healing energy but you know whether it works or not all the time i actually have no idea i don't really have an opinion on that either so i think there is if there is real ill health illness lack of wellness lack of wholeness involved the openness to believe in your healing through whatever modality or combination thereof that comes to you is a very powerful factor and so <clears throat> i think that therefore how can the placebo test even in modern science and modern medicine ever really be a hundred percent waterproof test of if something works or not because if you believe you don't know that you're having the real pill or the fake placebo pill you know if you believe that it is what effect does that have you know our mind is really an un underexplored planet an underexplored realm and very powerful so yeah anyone else want to jump in yeah i think katinka when you talk about the medical research on drugs and i think there's some research that shows that up to 50 percent of the placebo group go on to show improvement or to show um advancement you know in whatever is being tested and i think just looking at our own you know what you were saying there both of you if you look at our when we began in the ceremonial planning of this conference and still ongoing because our intention was to heal to to look at healing then naturally that is very much related to self mind spirit body yeah and we each of us have journeyed with this healing journey from beginning to now yes uh, what you know with the intention soon as you set intention to heal or to go to so you were talking about reiki going to go to a how many stories do people have of going to setting the the intention to do a reiki training and it begins from there not mm. from when you have the achievements it begins from setting the intention and if there is that um you know nervousness about what's to come then people talk about stories about being delayed not being able to get there you know blocks in the road that the power of intention and the power of the mind in both healing and unhealing <laughs> I don't think we're underestimated i'm sure we've all got all of us have got stories that support that yeah i think it has to do a lot with 
uh, with clear intention. And uh, I remember um, when I first started with uh, working with Sulis, I took out a, a, an old goddess card deck that I had where I knew that she had a card in there and I just wanted to have a picture of her in that gateway. And on the card, it was, I'm healed, I'm whole, and I'm holy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, aren't those three beautifully linked? <laughs> yes, exactly. And for me, it's so interesting because goddess would not create, you know, something that is not perfect. And a lot has to do with mindset. And I think in our world, a lot of people are overfed and undernourished. So it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a lot about an inner journey of what's actually going on and, mm -hmm. um, and it, a balance between how you're feeling, what you, and you know, work-life balance, that whole thing. It's everything is here. Everything is here and everything is interconnected with each other. You know, everything. So it, it's a healing of, of, of the mind, of your thoughts. It's healing of the body. It's healing of self, of healing of everything is interconnected. And that, remembering that we are allowed to be holy or that we are actually perfect, I think is a, is a, big, is a big step towards healing. And to remember that is actually the key to go on to the healing journey, is to remember that you are actually perfect, that you are actually holy, that you are divinely made by goddess. And then from then on, the journey starts. I think that's a very interesting perspective that you bring up there, um, Stephanie, and I'm not entirely sure if I agree with you 100% there. I think that when you are looking at healing crises in people's lives, accident, I don't think there, there my belief is not that that is by design uh, of the great divinities or um, in the perfection of someone's life, things can just happen or that it's a soul choice. I don't, I, personally, I don't believe that. And also, if you're looking at real life-threatening illnesses, incurable illnesses, terminal illnesses, the healing journey that someone walks in that particular way is um, <clears throat> its a very beautiful core self-valuing and self-knowing to have, to know you are holy and whole no matter what, even if you are suffering from real diseases and conditions or accidents that damage your physicality or your mind or your emotional body. Uh, however, I think there's something, I, I can't get in bed with thinking it's the perfection of goddess that things like that happen to people. I think the, the struggle that people go through in situations like that, you know, and, and how do you hold on to your belief in healing or of healing or of seeing it as some sort of healing journey if you know you are terminally ill, I mean, this for me, I'm, I'm grateful oh, no, I to see my journey, good. but I I'm do good. know people close to me who, who have been or are on that journey. So I think it's a very interesting perspective that you have. And then I, I can't help but go like, and how would that actually, is that true for me? If, if the worst were to be uh, yeah, a reality. You understood me what I meant. I meant that we all come to this earth created by goddess and absolutely perfect. Everything that comes is to learn and is here for the, is a journey and not made by goddess, but it is, it is our choice of what we do with it. Not that give, goddess gives us these things. Holy is that goddess only creates holy. She only creates perfect. But we come to this earth to grow and to go on the journey yes and and my my i understand what you're saying mm -hmm. i think that my issue is that i don't think people cho choose to get cancer or motor neuron disease or a terrible brain damage from an accident or something like that how you then have the journey with it yes i'm in alignment with you again it's just that bit in the middle i'm i'm not comfortable with yeah but that's okay. We can have different opinions, you know. <laughs> yes, definitely. Can it have something to do also about a perception? You know, the, uh, it's really interesting. The perfect, the perfection point, because it resonates also not with um, illnesses, but also with the status that you have in life. Um, it happens many times that 
maybe we are part of you know minorities for some reasons like um i faced a time in my life where i was where people would tell me i was not normal because i was a homosexual and i fought for a part of my life saying no i'm normal and i and then i was like no it's it's fine i mean the the norm is what nature brings out in majority so yes i'm not normal the issue is that our society puts what's not the majority or what's diverging from the norm into you know, the category of being wrong. So there is where lies you know, the issue. So I try, I learned how to embrace also the diversity and the being not normal at all. But that the fact is, you know, the, the, the evil that we put into the, the diverging from that. And, and maybe there is something like that as well in, um, in, in, you know, in the sight of being created perfect in a way so we we want to arc back to a time where we were you know where yes yes we were perfect as a start then shit happened sorry <laughs> and it happens and how we deal with that it's a part of our process isn't it a bit and um, yeah i think i think the word perfect is i find very difficult uh if you th if you talk about um you know like a wholeness i think that is for me that comes far more closer to uh, the spiritual for me, uh, mm -hmm. perfect is such a loaded word. Like you know, I mean, if you see what people do to their bodies to be perfect, you know, it's 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 mm -hmm. distortion really. So for me, it's, it's for me, I I but I hear with the Stephanie is more about this wholeness that is you know maybe your soul journey or um, yeah, and uh, again those words are so close to each other, the wholeness. So um david bauer i think was it who does the lemurian uh, healing he he said once in his uh, training he said uh, uh, healing is the journey towards wholeness and it's it's not really um it's not it's not even the goal it's not the wholeness is actually it's more like a remembering um and that's and then you come back to the placebo <laughs> placebo again it's for so it's 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 about um, body, mind, and spirit. It's not just the body. Yes, the body can get ill, but in that illness, like you said, Katinka, and, and I've seen that with a with a very close friend, with Evelyn, you know, who was so whole in her journey towards dying. It wasn't about getting better. So the the whole the healing journey was not about your body getting better. It was about this whole. Uh, coming together of body, mind, spirit, and, and soul journey. For me, that's so. It's, for me, that's a the the word wholeness works better for me. And again, you know, if you go back to the placebo, um, you know, I actually don't. I don't mind. You know, if it's like the placebo effect, then I eh? if somebody says. Because this is what you hear a lot with alternatives when it comes to alternative, especially, you know, homeopathy or, you know, which for me is, I have seen proof, of, I literally seen proof of this, you know, um, that, that, it, that it can work. And especially when, and that was nothing to do with placebo, but because that was to a, a small child who didn't even know uh, they were getting, uh, they were getting the homeopathy. So they didn't even know. And still, there was, uh, you know, a healing going on or a, a effect going on. Uh, Why was it going with this? <laughs> so I think, you know, it's like the, the um, yeah. So the, yeah, it's often said that uh, alternative healing, it's it's seen as like, oh well, it's not real. It's not real. It's a placebo. Um, and I think, um, I think it's that for me, it doesn't matter how it works if it works. You know, if somebody feels better through an alternative healing whatever that is you know in, in the training i teach the the bridget healing which is not about curing it's it's about really connecting deeply with goddess with bridget in this case uh, and and this hierarchy and everything comes in that and it works and i don't actually care how it works because i trust and people who come they trust and that's why it works so if Trust is the placebo. I don't care, you know. Can I bring in once again what Stephanie said to go back to the placebo? Because there's a nice language effect there. Um, it doesn't work in English, but in Italian, perfection, to perfect something means to, you do it with contracts. When you 
when you make them whole, when you complete them. So there is a sense I feel in what Stephanie was saying, which is like, you know, something perfect at the beginning, something that is whole in a way. And th there is a sense in that, that once that perfection, that wholeness is broken, you can apply something that the Japanese would call kintsuji, which, which is to, you know, to repair with gold. So to... Yeah, yeah. And it's also a way, the, the brokenness, that the light gets in. So is it the placebo effect? Can it be a more effective way, in a, in a certain way, to, to do the kintsuji, to let the light in and to let the gold flow in? Is it I think I think that crises of the soul or of health can be places where the light can get in, mm -hmm. uh, in their journeys. And I do actually, I, I, <clears throat> I do like this uh, idea of wholeness and holy that Stephanie brought and the perfection of how we come in, really. Um, I see lots of people are, are agreeing with the word wholeness because a perfection has these connotations, certainly in English, of, you know, something that you're not at yet. And then this whole thing of um, <clears throat> being um, not the norm that you were bringing in, uh, Andrea, yeah. Yeah? outside of Beautiful. the norm is still perfection, is still wholeness. There's nothing not whole about that. Healthy about that, <laughs> and then Marion, you were bringing in this element of trust as the as the magic, really. That that we actually have to have trust in medical science as well. You have to give yourself. Oh yeah. In the hands of the modern day magician uh, magicians, you do not know or understand what they're doing at all. Yeah, you have to trust, and you can not trust as well you know um i think amanda you were bringing something in earlier on which maybe you can remind me of what you were talking about there with side effects oh the nocebo effect of um of the side effects the possible side effects to pharmaceutical drugs there, there is a, a placebo and a nocebo that if you believe that you're going to get side effects from those drugs, it's likely that you will. I mean, I am someone who has the nocebo effect. Mm. I'm convinced that if I take a pharmaceutical drug, I'm going to get a side effect, and usually that's the case. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, I wanted to come in there. I, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the perfect and the imperfect. Because, of course, perfect sits within that word of imperfect. The two, the two go together really well as whole, as whole, whole, wholeness. Imperfect and perfect. Mm. The problem with it is we judge it. And judgment comes in that something is not good for us or is bad for us. Or I'm not whole because I'm imperfect. Yeah, yes. I think that bit, that, that is, um, yes. attack on ourselves, you know, that we want to, uh, that can um, affect our healing journey, our healing path. And when we think about um, wholeness, in my own experience of, of trauma and trauma healing is that memory, memory and becomes fragmented. So we become, I became fragmented. So I'm not whole in that way anymore. I am set, and there are separate pieces in my beingness, in my memory, in my body. And so the healing journey, the healing work was to come together to become whole again. So that um, I'm neither perfect or imperfect. I'm no neither of those things. I'm working towards being whole in my psyche, in my mental, physical, and spiritual bodies. Mm. My emotional self is working towards taking those steps to becoming whole. So yeah, wholeness has to be on the top of the healing um pathway doesn't it you know yeah and he and healing which uh, what you when you just said with uh, the fragments you know it, that is something especially in the shamanic uh tradition they work really with and but also shadow work what we work with you know is also a kind of a fragmentation of uh of the wholeness but yeah. more 
uh, on the mental or, or yeah, emotional mm -hmm. mental uh, side than on the physical. And that's another thing is like we often look at healing as something that is a physical thing. But actually, you know, the, the, the healing of the emotional and, the, and as you say, uh, trauma, but also just wounding, which could be is, wounding and trauma is not uh, the same. So, you know, so, it, yeah, I think all of that is part of the healing. And, uh, yeah, again, yeah, for me, for me, that's really about, uh, and I think the, the, the spiritual can really play its part in that. And I, I, I don't know if you have had that in the past, but I got people saying, oh, well, you know, it's all, it's, it's just make believe it's not real. You have to go uh, uh, to just the pharmaceutical, you know, it has to be like that. It has to be an operation it has to be this has to be. So there's a lot of judgment on alternative healing or spiritual healing or shamanic healing or all that of being not real. Uh, and hence, I think the placebo, but I think um, it is very real. Yeah, and if you go to places, you know, where there are people seeking healing, you know, when they're going to receive a hug from uh, a saint, an Indian saint, or, um, or interestingly, I went to see John of God, who now, as we know, is, I think, still in prison. Um, but what's interesting about that, that the people that are go coming, and I think they still go to the casa there, and, and are seeking healing. And mm. they come away having received healing. They come away feeling with many stories of healing. Yeah. So that, that journey, that pilgrimage to whatever it is in manifested in the physical world the casa on the you know in brazil or in india or at the local spiritualist church or wherever no. it is that you seek that you journey to that you pilgrim to as a pilgrim mm. i think it's really very that is the intention of healing isn't it i'm going to heal i'm going to heal some part of me that maybe i don't even know yet which is broken and just that pure prayer and intention is enough and being with other people who are also seeking the same they're all yeah. going with the same heart-centered intention and and in that place miracles happen healing happens mm. stephanie you were going to say something yes i think it's very multi-layered uh, the the healing journey i mean it can only speak for myself how it was um after cancer with 21 not hearing or hearing that i could not have children and losing my womb um i think i was able to 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 heal that part through looking or through opening up to multi layers of healing um for me it was the i that i reminded myself that i was made by goddess and that goddess only creates perfect <laughs> and that i am good enough as as i am so that was for me that was a big key of knowing that i'm whole and knowing that uh, everything else is just is a layer that I can start stripping away like an onion and getting help. Of course, it was medical. And then also the other part of really going deep into my stuff and where it came from and, you know, um, all these things, getting years and years of, of cleaning up the shit, <laughs> you know, with a different kind of healing modalities or healing. So it was really about trying to listen to myself on what I need on my healing journey to become whole. So that, and for me, that was a big key, a key is listening to what my body needs and go and trusting what my body feels and going with that. Yeah. It's, 
if it's um you know if it was a, a, a lot of healing happened throughout the 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 Rhiannon training of course with all the womb work that we did there and so many different things today I'm a mother <laughs> you know I never thought that I would have kids but I was able to to heal that part mm. and even though I was told I cannot have so it's really it was trusting uh trusting my gut and trusting the medicine that I needed, trusting also the therapy that I needed, trusting the, the the healers that I went to or that I felt called to, trusting the classes that I went to because I was drawn to them and I knew that I needed that puzzle piece to become whole again. Mm. And it was oh, and you and you automatically on a healing journey you go through all these things like what did I do wrong or how do I deserve this or why is this happening to me did I do anything in a past life and ah oh, you know all these absolutely. things absolutely automatically go through all these different layers and um, and all and listening to all these different layers bring you to the right path that you have to go to be able to to get healed and it's so multi layered. Yeah, and I think a lot of it, certainly in the way that um, that I would work or, you know, that we work in the conference, is also with the body. It's not just energy. It's not just energetic. Very much working with the body and the healing of the body in all sorts of different ways. And and what you're saying, this this it doesn't have to be an either or. You can mix mm -hmm. the modalities and, and absolutely that empowerment of your own sovereignty of your body often... We know actually better what exactly is feeling out of alignment, out of harmony or in disease than any test can really tell us. And then a medical person can be a great diagnostic tool after which you then decide what modalities you're going to pursue. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's really great that you shared that, uh, that story. And also really, you know, the words that work for different people work for the different mm -hmm. people. It's completely... Okay, I think it's important in these conversations, particularly when we're talking about what is healing, what is the placebo, that we get these, this is like Marion said, the, the hours that we have these conversations in the ceremonial group, really to fine tune and listen and find out where we're all at with this and then weave something out of those strands, really. There were some comments there, I think, uh, Andrea. <clears throat> Sorry, yes, two of them. Um, Astra Rose was saying, yes, Stephanie, I understand what you are saying about God is creating us perfect. Perfect not in the modern, harsh, high standard way. Perfect in the whole and holy forever way. Yes. And then Lily was saying, amazing, Stephanie, thank you for sharing some of your powerful health journey. I agree, it was really emotional. It made me really emotional. Thank you, Stephanie, for sharing that. It was really, really powerful. Thank you. Yeah, thank and you. that resonates, I feel, incredibly and beautifully with the way also Katinka and Marion described healing in there are recent interviews that can be found in the Facebook group, but today we posted as well a video of Katinka talking exactly about this, which was the integration of many ways of healing. And Stephanie, you described it very beautifully, how you can integrate so many different things, like the, the, your your spiritual, you know, spiritual teachings and the therapies you, you needed to attend to. And Marion said something else that I think closes the circle with that. Um, that has to do with that there is a point in time and space where we want to go back when we go through healing. We we feel there is something like when we were children, maybe, uh, that we want to go back to a pureness, um, a wholeness, maybe, that we want to go back to. And I think that three, like your experience and Katinka, Mary, what, the, what how the way you described healing really comes all together. So the question is now, is the placebo effect something that we can include you know as a positive thing in in healing therapies i mean the way we intend healing of course and is healing um something that we search for to go back to a space and place of wholeness it i think it really depends what your experience has been in the past of wholeness <laughs> and health healthy relationship boundaries healthy childhood which is certainly not the case for most people and a lot of the clients I work with in sessions are have not had that imprinting at all they need to become adults for their own child self and it's a lot of work yes working if you like through time and space backwards but really inner inner work with places that may never have been met or had a healthy imprinting so I think it's hugely individual 
Yeah. And so I think the time is not linear in this. So in that, I agree. We are working in a yeah. different dimensionality. And so I think the pseudo effect, to give it that name, uh, whether we want to call it trust in wholeness, there always was wholeness, even if you have not experienced it. And the fragmentation that Amanda mentioned as well, that happens to people in their life, or the wounding that Marion mentioned, or the physical health journeys, crises that um, Stephanie mentioned, these are all part of a development of a person and of a soul, of a particular journey, a fortunate one or an unlucky one, as the case may be for everybody. But that inner core, the holy, the holy wholeness, <laughs> I think, you know, to touch that, sometimes you have to be an adult to reach that for the first yeah. time, you know. Wow, it's so, it moves me so much to be, you know, with people who are so committed to their healing journey. So, Placido, Placido, I think whatever helps the people in a healthy, wholesome way to get there, that's the goddess in action as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I have a tricky one. Amanda, you brought up the nocebo effect, and we talked about that for the you know, pharmaceutical aspect of it. But you are all healers here, so you you do have maybe different way of treating things, but you, you are all healers. Has it ever happened that you encountered someone, or in your own experience, that you experienced the nocebo effect on the spiritual part of healing? So that maybe your trust was broken in a healing, you know, in and then you manifested side effects like you lack the trust with people because some some spiritual healing practices went wrong or maybe your privacy or you know trust was infringed and maybe that reflected negatively on the way you conducted your life as it have happened to you or to some people that you you treated and you worked with oh it's so interesting andrea hmm Also, Lily sends us a note, which is placebo definition in Latin is I shall please. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I Thank you, Lily. That's, that's very welcome. I think there is, I think there is an placebo effect also on the spiritual part of it. Yes, I think there absolutely is. And um, I think as a person that's come through many modalities of healing and taught mm. and I'm just trying to think of. Specific. I'm not. I'm not because it's about side effects. See, I, I don't. I'm. I'm just yeah, thinking. What could, think side, that, what could be the side effects of spiritual healing? And I, I think know. there is side effects. I think, and I think that is usually um, when something is um, initiated. Something comes up from the shadow or from the wounding, and it comes up, and it, it's. Um, it's hard to take, it's hard to remember, it's hard to see. And, and then there can be a lack of trust or there's a whole host of negative emotions that can arise from that yeah. moment of uh, release or healing or seeing something that's been forgotten or just seen for the first time. And I think of the, um, my adverse reactions to um to emdr when i was going through my own process of of dealing with traumatic memory mm. i i had real physical symptoms yes I had six weeks of anaphylaxis several blue lights to hospital but i'm not allergic to anything so that I would say that was a nocebo mm. Mm. because it was true anaphylaxis had to be treated as such, but I'm not allergic to anything. Yes, I absolutely think there is this uh, nocebo effect in spiritual healing as well, like Amanda is speaking into there, and, and it can have serious consequences, which again circles back to our integrity as friend practitioners to our you know uh, best mode of practice um to the best of our ability to the continued learning and to the guru effect because i think there is something you were actually speaking into that earlier uh, amanda into the kind of group energy 
around um, healing, which is it real? Is it placebo? Is it hysteria? Is it a, is it an energetic field that is created between all people in which things magic can happen with the intention set? What is it? I don't exactly know. But I think if there is a positive effect, there is, of course, also the potential for a negative effect. We had a whole roundtable about the guru uh, syndrome, you know. I think this yep. is definitely there. And, and uh, John of God, you mentioned, uh, Amanda, in your own personal experience. And, and look at the shadow there, you know. It's massive, massive traumatic wounding that was caused in all sorts of ways in the real physical world and then this healing capacity in India. So it is yeah. a, a huge topic to, to look into. And I think that also has many layers and many angles, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, from my experience of that visit, there were groups of people who were returning multiple times who were healed of hugely serious physical disease. Mm. Yeah. Belief, trust, and faith. Yes, and and how easy to con people who have that, and how often yeah, is I mean, throughout, throughout history has the con been played? You know. Yes, yeah. but take take John of God out of that picture. That that was a group. Um, that was hugely supported by the group of people completely focused and in, intentional to heal and wanting everyone else to heal, you know, sure. that coming together to heal. And that, I mean, that happens in Lourdes, as far as I'm aware, for example, another well-known example here in Europe as well, you know. And I think maybe to, to a degree that might even happen in the conference, in the Goddess Conference, the Healing Goddess Conference, who people might actually really come and co-create a field where our yeah. healing intentions and the healing that we are holding as embodiments of Goddess stream mm -hmm. can be magnified. Who knows? I think there is definitely a not exactly what you were asking about there, Andrea, but I think this is a very interesting part of the conversation, really. There is not a separation. It is an overlay of the two mm -hmm. uh, that uh, topics or um, names, words, concepts yes. that we've put in a place of opposition. It's not an either or, it's a both, really. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that is extremely interesting. And the other side of this topic is... Um, you know, it's it doesn't have placebo itself doesn't have maybe a bad rap, but when we if we enlarge you know our view on this and we look at it from above, sometimes we have a bad rap on the way holistic healing in a way um, uses you know instruments of the you know that hark back to the placebo effect in a way, um, like the contemporary world um, sometimes might focus a lot on the mechanical resolution of the stuff while maybe some things that we are actually experiencing pains and heartaches or headaches uh can be you know can come from our experiences and um the holistic approach can in that way be much more effective in a way and um so how do you move within this uh suspicion and in this um again um uh not contradiction but uh opposition that the world creates around holistic healing and you know pharmacological healing how do you move as well as i think i think it's just i think it's up to the people i think if people don't trust they mm -hmm. will not use uh, holistic healing and mm -hmm. i think it is um and actually also the other way around. I think yes. also if they don't yep. trust the medical world, they will <laughs> yeah. not go there. So I think people really choose the way. And I, I, I come back to trust, you know, and, and you said that, well, if you think, I, you know, you also have to trust a surgeon. You know, there's people who's like, I'm never going to get under a knife. I'd rather die, you know. So it's, I think it's the people are making the choice to to do that. And also, you know, it's it's... If I look at my own experience, you know, with, with my son, I was like, we went through this whole uh, normal, um, I said, what well, has a name for it? The normal medical world. Um, and um, it just made him more ill and ill and ill and ill. And he was by five and he had a half a pharmacy with him in his life, you know, and it was like, that's not going to work. 
and then we kind of went through the whole holistic uh, thing and that actually worked much better so i think people will it's, it's i don't think you can convince people if they don't believe it if they don't trust it they will not go there i think it had there has to be uh, a trust or maybe also like the one thing definitely didn't work so let's try the other thing so i think it's it's yeah i don't the negativity uh, of it of the negativity especially about well i, I would say especially about uh, the the alternative holistic healing yeah. but there's also lots of negativity about uh, the, the the medical side and the normal medical side so I think, yeah, it's it's not, it is really what people feel is right for them. And I think that if you are in the body, in the physical body, which is a big if, because lots of people aren't properly in the physical body for all sorts of reasons. And like Stephanie said right at the beginning, you are making a relatively healthy choices for what you surround yourself with and what you put inside your body in the form of foods and the things that nourish you, not just on a food level, on a sustenance level, but on an energetic level as well. And you are soft in your subtle body. Then the effects of more subtle forms of healing, sound vibration, the homeopathies or the plant fragrances or whatever, the, the energy healings, are going to have more to come into. I think there is something there, really. Again, there's this interlinking of yeah. the choices we make in our life and then the choices you make when you hit a real health issue or a well-being issue. So I, I, as Marion says, I think it is extremely individual and you can't, you can't say it is this or it is that for anybody else, actually, other than for yourself. And it can be a mix of both as well. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. It is a complete journey. Going back to the placebo, though, I think that they have, um, I think there is scientific research now that shows that it is um, proven that um, it can heal. Mm. Mind feel, over I matter. Feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So there is the neurobiology, you know, uh, physiology to to the placebo. It's like a connection. Uh, cells speaking within our bodies, like very much like yeah. the trees speak in a forest. And yeah. and that reminds me of the book by Dr. Bruce Lipton, who I think he won a, a Nobel a Nobel Prize for his cellular research, the biology of belief, that he showed the change in the cell the disease cell by 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 the mind by belief by the mental mm. by meditation by thought by positive thinking or just like that the water like you said in the beginning um uh, amanda from dr emoto yes water yes. Mm, that we were talking frozen about. ice particles that mm. responded to the negative and to the uh positive mm -hmm. thoughts being directed towards them incredible and i yeah. think like Tinka said coming into the body so for me the, the 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 journey before the rhiannon training but then really landing actually in my body throughout the you know learning from katinka that was a huge jump you know on my on my healing journey um, because you, the you body feel holds, better when you're the body really keeps the score. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the body keeps the score and Dr. Bessel van der Kolk and of course <laughs> yeah. Dr. Peter Levine who's wake, the waking the tiger when um, someone who is physically very affected is moved through just moving in the mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. The story of running from tiger it's incredible isn't it yeah yeah and we hope to raise that biology to level up our healing this summer uh when we all come together for the glastonbury goddess conference
Join us this year for the 29th Glastonbury Goddess Conference, a joyful gathering of goddess-loving people, a six days in-person event in Glastonbury, Avalon, running from Tuesday 30th July to Sunday 4th August 2024, with the fringe events starting from Sunday 28th July. This year the theme is the Goddess of Healing, it's our maiden year, the first year of a new five-year cycle. International presenters, transformative workshops and experiences, deep ceremonies on the sacred land of Avalon, community, art, fun and love for Goddess. Let your healing journey begin this year. Join us for the Glastonbury Goddess Conference, Goddess of Healing. And please join us going on goddessconference.com and picking up the ticket that works for you, for your days, for the time you'll be staying in Glastonbury. Please do join us. It's going to be an amazing, amazing festival of goddess, of goddess-loving people, a wonderful community. You'll meet all the people in this panel today and so, so many more. And um, I would love to thank all this fantastic panel for today's discussion. It's been incredible. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Andrea. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Amanda. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Marion. Thank you. Bye. To everyone, uh, please uh, please subscribe to our pages on Facebook and Instagram. Follow us on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today with us at this roundtable. This is the roundtable, a talk show brought to you by the Glastonbury Goddess Conference. In this circle, the priestesses of the ceremonial circle, the weavers of our annual gathering, talk about pivotal topics about our community, spirituality and goddess.